Next up uh, is Daria Tatai. <clears throat> Daria is an executive board member of the EIT. Uh, go ahead, Daria. The uh, European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Now, the EIT, as you know, pardon me, that's a, that's a Brussels acronym, uh, fewer letters than words. Uh, but the EIT uh, is an experiment, uh, and a very important experiment in promoting, ultimately, entrepreneurship and a productive flow of ideas from lab to market in Europe. Uh, Daria is uh, on, a faculty member of the Warsaw University of Technology Business School and at the moment I believe you're uh, at uh, Ann Arbor, the University of Michigan, studying entrepreneurship as well. So Daria, please. I should say good afternoon, uh, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to talk, and I believe that all innovative organizations best tell their, their strategies through stories. I do believe that a storytelling is a powerful way to convey a message. So let me start with a story which uh, embodies the how entrepreneurship can be fostered in universities. Long time ago, uh, as long as maybe two and a half generations, which actually is not this long ago, a dean invested in a startup. But he invested in the startup not only by giving uh, seed money, but also by renting space that was developed at the precise, at the premises of this university, so that this company could benefit from other companies. Uh, other companies who would be also driven by the same innovation feather, uh, closely able to collaborate with researchers. Some of you may recognize this was the then at the time the dean of the Stanford University, and he invested in two students of his. One was called Hewitt, and the other one was called Packard. Uh, when I traveled to uh, Palo Alto, uh, last year, I was looking for a garage, the famous garage that they started their venture. Well, of course, big stories, big companies, big cities, big nations are always built around a myth. Believe me, this garage is a very special garage because it is placed in a close vicinity to the Stanford University. You can walk from this garage. It is placed in what used to be at a time and still is a university district where professors, Stanford pr professors, uh, live there and uh, socialize there and uh, grow their children there. So it was not just a garage in a place, but it was a very specific garage in a very specific neighborhood in Palo Alto. I'm starting uh, this because Whatever crisis comes, economical, in waves that have been coming through the world, one thing is true. We cannot reinvent the free enterprise. This is how growth is created, has been created, and will be created in the free world, in the democratic world. But a free enterprise model is actually getting free. If you read the uh, blog by Chris Anderson, the uh, editor-in-chief of Wired, you say, what about the free economy, non-currency economy? Everything that is digital will become sooner or later free. This idea sounds absurd, but when you look at the whole disposal markets, disposal economy, when the first Gillette was introduced as a disposable razor, uh, razor and blade, you think, well, the crazy ideas really make disruptive technologies change into disruptive markets, industries, and economies. So these ideas do originate in, in heads of people who are open to thinking in creative ways and bring their ideas to the market. Um, but entrepreneurship is not naturally embraced by majority of universities. Universities were created initially as secular schools to, to, to foster val values of, of uh, church, of Christian church. Then it was to create the elites of a society. Then the role was moved with the um, Humboldt University to create research, knowledge. But knowledge is not only about knowledge and science, but it's also about socialization and creating meaning, framing the world around us. And when we look at the 
what the Generation Y cares about, the generation of young people, the internet generation, these who were born after 1980, <coughs> well, you say free economy, you say market, but they do not mean money, or they do not only mean money. Very often they, meet, they mean market solutions to solve grand challenges. What are these grand challenges? We talk so much in Europe about the grand challenges. Well, in other parts of the world, they talk about grand challenges too. And these are the challenges that really affect society, that do bring benefit and change to the communities. It can be a local community uh, in a city, or it can be a community in uh, a developing market when you bring access to clean water. But whatever the technology is, in Europe, when we say innovation, we usually mean technology. The solutions which are not only embracing technology, but which are the dance between society and technology really will bring change over the next generation. Um, so how about this concept of entrepreneurial university? MIT and Stanford were first of the two to promote the model. In Europe, there are universities who are, who are driven by the, by the <coughs> entrepreneurial fever. And indeed, when you look at how entrepreneurs are developed, you can say that among students, there are those who, whatever you will do, will never be entrepreneurs. There are those who, whatever you do, they will be entrepreneurs anyway. And there is this vast majority of students who simply do not consider this as their career choice, as something that is worth to devote their time um, to. So they're creating a framework at a university, an inspiring framework where faculty, uh, with close relation to industry, where entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs, business angels, investors, venture capital people who do not bring only money, but also bring uh, know-how, how to grow fast growth enterprises, interact. So it's actually a meeting point. And always it happens so that actually university <coughs> is not really a driving force there. It was so at MIT and Stanford that it was the govern government that put the spotlight and saw the university's mission as driving growth, driving change, uh, because of the overriding values and, and policies. Here, two years ago, there was a startup, a very modest startup born in, the Euro in Europe. It is called EIT, and you can hear how does it resonate with MIT. But of course, Europe is different, and times are different. We cannot recreate what has been done uh, over the last 50 years in the US. And we cannot copy what is being done in China with new universities opened, opening every month, an enormous investment there. We cannot also recreate the entrepreneurial fever, fever which, for example, in Brazil, brings a few thousand students to work on business ventures in Sao Paulo two weeks ago. Uh, living in camps, a kind of Woodstock for geeks. Do we have this here in Europe? Well, there are good genes, there's the DNA, there is still the memory of entrepreneurial emerging markets in Europe, <coughs> in the um, uh, eastern part of Europe, in excellent places where entrepreneurship is being grown, but how to, how to bring it to scale. So the EIT, European Institute of Innovation and Technology, is very clearly focused on giving opportunity to attract people who are entrepreneurial, to attract organizations, universities and businesses who understand that bringing growth, developing ventures in a network world, it's a function of how well you collaborate locally how well you are knit into the local business and university network, and at the same time, how you are coupled, loosely coupled, with a broad network of other co-location centers, innovation centers in Europe and abroad. Um, there are certain societal challenges that will require integrative approach, and the communities that EIT has created follow uh, some of them. This is sustainable energy, 
How do we bring governments, industry, education together to integrate new business models to, to deliver energy solutions? This is the climate mitigation adaptation. How to find maybe non-technological driven solutions to mitigate um, um, the, the climate change issues. And this is the future information and communication society, which again is a dance between what internet, what the cloud computing, what, what interconnectivity in the world can do, and how the societies, the network society, the global network society will change. Um, it is known and it is true, and yet this is so difficultly done, you cannot tell anybody to be an entrepreneur. You can inspire it by giving opportunity, by giving accent to role models, and you cannot um, prevent somebody from becoming an entrepreneur. What the EIT would like to do, we would like to celebrate entrepreneurship. We believe that this is a driving force for the humanity. We believe that this is a driving force for Europe. Uh, within our communities, that, that which encompass a broad network of best European universities, we would like to spotlight talent, spotlight talented people who want to explore entrepreneurial opportunities in the midst of their ca career, leaving academia, going to business partnering with investors and business people. We would like to spotlight students who work with their faculty to, to, grow, to grow ventures. <coughs> uh, next year, we will um, hold our first EIT award, partnering with Science Business, to showcase what is happening uh, in the communities, how the communities are networking, co-locating, uh, giving the entrepreneurial drive. But this, was, this will not only be about putting a spotlight. This is not about uh, putting spotlight where the entrepreneurial fashion is created. This is about growing talent. This is why the award will be a mentoring scheme, where we will place uh, and match the high potential ventures, high potential entrepreneurial teams with very senior executives and entrepreneurs. Um, once Jack uh, Welsh, uh, the legendary CEO of GE, visited London, and one of, of his local directors told him, oh, I have a mentor. He said, you have a mentor? Uh, yeah. Uh, I took the youngest, person in my, the youngest, smartest person in my corporation to mentor me to understand what is going on in technology. <laughs> uh, two weeks later, Jack Welsh had a mentoring scheme, a reverse mentoring scheme for all his senior management. So we believe that by partnering young people, young entrepreneurs, with very senior talent, seasoned entrepreneurs, this relationship will benefit both. We do believe that entrepreneurship is being born out of human interaction. Um, I very much want to welcome you and invite you to look into what is EIT doing. It's a small startup. Uh, it's about people. It's about fostering entrepreneurship. It's about celebrating this disruptive DNA that some of us have. Some of us don't know that we have this. And it's also about creating a social uh, revolution, a tipping point in Europe. Let's become uh, Woodstock for geeks and for entrepreneurs uh, Europe-wide. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Daria. Uh, that was a bit of a news flash, uh, the announcement of the first EIT awards. And on, Daria, on behalf of the Science Innovation Board, I'd like to thank you and, the, and Ronald uh, de Bruyne for the vote of confidence that uh, you give us in working with you on these awards for next year. So thank you very much.